I never thought I'd make this video. If you would have told me back last fall if I even wanted to talk about this, I didn't want to talk about it. I was so ashamed and hurt, afraid. I couldn't bring myself to talk about what happened and it's taken me till now to be able to talk about it. I found myself sharing it with some close friends a couple months ago and then last night with um, some people I didn't even know and I knew it was time to share it with you all. So I'm no longer with Cuddleist formally like on their website and I know some of you have also reached out looking for me there and I'm not there. And I want to tell you the story about what happened and admit to my own mistakes like where you know of course I could have always done better and that's real and take responsibility for that and also with all of this explain to you like what my values are and what is really important to me and why I do what I do in my work so it all started off last year <laughs> in a pandemic <laughs> all the things that happened in a pandemic right the whole world turned upside down well, I um, had a, a colleague said, hey, I have a client. Do you want to reach out to them and see them? I'm not seeing clients right now because of COVID, but I know you are. Do you want his contact information? I was like, yeah, sure. Cool. Um, so I reached out to him. Didn't hear back. You know, like it was this, didn't hear back. Like it took like a month. It was a significant amount of time before we were able to have our screening call, which by the way, if you want a session with me around cuddling, we need to have a screening call or just any extra, most things I require a screening call. So we, we talked and I knew pretty quickly, you know, here's a, a prospective client that hadn't been touched in 10 years um, or had, it's been maybe longer. I mean, it'd been a really long time and it, there was, trauma and just a lot of stuff there and I thought you know um so here are the you know the cuddle options I provide but I I'm sensing that there might be something that's some, a deeper work that might be needed here so I offered my retouch work which is my rehabilitative touch therapy and you know it only kind of goes so far it stays kind of within platonic stuff and then I said I'm also a surrogate partner and sorry, partner work. And I just kind of like <sighs> divulged it. Like, you know, it allows for us to continue moving forward. It's in within a container. There's a therapist, maybe your therapist, but I have someone I work with. Like, we you know we can explore all the parts of a human relationship without any kind of boundaries. And I, you know, I explained some of the more intimate stuff, right? Like, I sensed the client was comfortable. You know, we were talking so, it seemed so easy. They said they'll talk to their therapist and they let me know. Great. Well, <laughs> sure did let me know. Uh, I got pretty nasty voicemail from the counselor. Very upset. I had re-traumatized their client. And that, you know, basically seemed like I pushed them back in his own recovery, his own work. It was pretty intense and how angry she was at me. I heard it. And if you're listening right now, I heard you completely. And so then, of course, that took me to talking to my uh, person that supervises me. And, you know, we processed it. And it was like, there's, I, I'm going to come back to this, but there's a lot of stuff to unpack there. Mm. Well, the client also then reached out to to Cuddleist and, and reported me for you know, offering this stuff. Now, <laughs> you might think, well, is, didn't you know the rules, you know? So it's really easy um, when we do this kind of work, you know, we're sharing kind of like, we're working with other colleagues around this work. You know, in, in my conscience, I, I, I didn't even remember where they'd come from. I mean, I just got the contact information. It wasn't, again, it'd been like, I think it had been a month for sure. I mean, in my conscience, it was about a month. So it had been significant, um, the time 
before I actually talk to the client. And one of the things about my work and why I love it is I want to respond to you all. So if you're a client and you come and you're like, you know, these are my issues. This is what's happening with me. You know, I'm I need touch and cuddling or, but there's all this other stuff that's there. You know, <laughs> it's been one of those things like, great, like we can do cuddling, but there might be some more other types of services that include therapists that are just more integrative, that can be more support to you, that we can make sure that you can meet your goals. And the goals ultimately are not that you become dependent on me, but that you can be out there in the world and have relationships and be this full person that you can be in the world. <laughs> like, eh, you know, but I was just too, I was just, that nah, wasn't anything. I, I, operate out of my integrity of what I saw in the moment. And anyway, so the client did complain and went to Cuddlist and Cuddlist contacted me and said what happened, right? So we had the conversation and I got an email sometime after that saying that I was suspended and that I'd made a mistake. The mistake was doing a bait and switch. So offering you know, they're coming in for one thing and I kind of like switch out something else. Even though like, again, it wasn't someone who came to me directly for cuddling. Eh, you know, <laughs> do what you will with that. Um, it was through somebody else, but still like in the integrity of cuddlers, I, I understand kind of why they needed to hold that line. And they were going to continue the process of, of clearing up the, the cuddlers name, which they, as a good, you know, a good business does that. So it makes sense. I will also admit to you all, you know, was it now five years back, maybe around this time, I was dealing with the police and you remember just <laughs> that kind of fiasco. If you've seen any of my videos on YouTube around working with um, San Antonio law enforcement, you know, like, yeah, I've had my share. I've, we went down that route. Um, the prospective client also filled out a police report and, um, you know, I, I was living with that too, right? So the this idea of like, there's within my industry, you know, I had this mark and then mm, there's a therapist out there that also thinks I'm, you know, causing harm. There's a client out there that was harmed and the client filed a police report and also, you know, of course, um, let cuddle us know what happened. So of course, like I spiraled into this like, like fear, right? Like so scared around, you know, I'll tell you, I was scared about like the loss of my place, like in Cuddleist. And even though Cuddleist and I've had our problems for many years, we have different ways of seeing things and we've struggled a lot in the past. Um, to finally make the break was really sad for me and really hard and needed to happen just that this was the way like I was and I like say the universe pushed me out kind of thing and and it was ultimately for my good and then there was the police piece where I was like all right so like let's check in like is there anything here that I'm doing that you know is causing harm to my community would be unlawful um that the police could say you know you're committing crime <laughs> right like let's look at that so I did all that work um but I mean to talk about this was so hard for me I felt angry also so I'll, I'll explain now I guess kind of where one of my philosophy is around this stuff so since the beginning I do these videos I explain the work I'm I am committed to the client Organization, organizations out there, they're training people to become practitioners. I have not put my focus on training practitioners. My focus is on training you all, like how to be, you know, in a session or like, what is this work all about and what can you expect? And like, I want to support you. So it's been about that. And so when I have clients come in who, again, like they express their needs or wants and they kind of can go out of the side of the code of conduct, I'm listening and I'm like, Hmm, what can we do here? How can I respond best? And Cuddleless responded in the best way when they realized that a lot of 
colors were also kind of moving outside the code. They were like, you know, pretty much the CYA kind of it. Make sure you make it put it in writing that, you know, the, the client knows that this is no longer a cuddle session and that you are now moving outside of that. So like they are protecting themselves. It makes a lot of sense. Um, in this case, it, you know, it wasn't quite, we weren't there. Like we weren't, I don't have documents from the get go, right? So it was a little more confusing. It was from just meeting the person over the phone. And going back to my point, it's like, I, I really want to listen to you all. And, you know, those of you who struggle with like your bodies, like what's going on with your body, how you feel about your body, or maybe, you know, you have an issue, like you're not comfortable with your sexual performance or whatever it might be. So I decided to go into surrogate partner work because that's a place where that's the work that we can do there. And we don't do it in the cuddle world. So if you're a pro cuddler, like I, I believe in the integrity of keeping it at a cuddle session. That's important. And if you want to do other work, then find a way to certify yourself, get in from, you know, get your training, get what you need so you can do other work as well, like keeping them separate. It's really important uh, for to also to say, protect the, the, the clients. In this case, um, you know, I was overextending. I said a lot more that, you know, I will allow that, you know, and take responsibility that that caused that client harm enough to, to take the actions that he needed to take, which I think was also really good for him. He needed to do that. And so this professional cuddle world as it is today is, is protected. I get it. Like we're trying to maintain that, that part of it. And one of the things that helped liberate me in this conversation to be able to talk about this was there's a new training showing up this next month. And it's a training that is created by black people for black bodies. And I'm, I'm doing it. I'm so excited. It's called Cuddle Sage. And when they came on the scene and explained their work, like about decolonizing, cuddling and touch, it just broke me open. Like I had this deep emotion because that's the work that I've been having to do like subversively. I've had to figure out like how to respond to clients and be present with them knowing that they have like needs that are outside of cuddling and so i've pursued other trainings and other modalities to do that um because it hurts to see someone hurting and so when they came on the stage and were explaining the training they were doing and And I guess I, I don't want to say more about it because I, I haven't gone to the training, right? We're the first generation. It was, But it was just liberating to have these voices that talk about bodies in this completely different way and not looking at like the rules of, so tough rules of like code of conduct cuddling, but that there's possibilities around intimacy that might look different with clothing or like the sexuality of it, like acknowledging that there's, it's not black and white. So last night there was a person that I overheard. They're like, you know, most people consider the cuddling, professional cuddling world right now is very white and hippie. And I laughed because <laughs> if that, if professional cuddling to you feels very like much like what white people do or hippies do, get it. Um, and they're, you know, thinking about what could professional cuddling look like with for brown and black bodies, black and brown bodies. I, I find so much value in that because it just seems like it's coming from within me. So, okay, I feel like I can go on forever about this. I want to say a few last things. I, I made a mistake around not making it very clear. Like, you know, it's kind of difficult. Like, Somebody calls me and says, I have all these past traumas and issues. And um, the first thing now I realize I could have done in that situation would have been to please give me the name of your therapist. I'd like to talk to them because they're the ones that referred you to this service and ask them, do you know what you're referring your client to? So important. Um, so 
I get I get it why she was angry and also it's, there's some responsibility on her second they come in and say I'd like to have your consent to discuss other services and probably in this I mean and if I really want to be strict like here is this form please sign it that you are willing to hear about other things that I do like that you're taking it outside of cuddleless that this cannot you know be this is no longer within the, the parameters of cuddleless if you want to talk about anything else so that's two had I done that I would have been cleared I didn't I'm usually pretty laid back and easygoing so eh, that happens but one thing that's not a mistake is my assessment this client was not ready for just jumping into a person who's just trained as a professional cuddler it wouldn't have been a possibility uh, again someone who doesn't have any other training but professional cuddling with a with cuddleless it would have, that's not that wouldn't have been it that's not something that I would ever recommend their needs were much deeper than that so my assessment of them having a more intense and collaborative effort feels really a lot more authentic and that that isn't a mistake my, I sense my, my assessment being uh, right on about that and my sense about my assessment about myself that this I'm grateful to be outside of any kind of body that's deciding for me how I practice and what I do it's great <laughs> to be able to decide for myself and to live in my own integrity and authenticity around how I see clients and how I experience clients and what they can get from me so that, and then within surrogate partner work I have someone who oversees right it's great um, but we do it against collaborative so I am valued and my input and my insights are equally as important as theirs um, so I think that's everything um, oh yeah one last thing I think it's super important when you talk about professional cuddling and your professional cuddler I invite you not to use the word cuddleist use professional cuddler just like Kleenex is not the name of what we call tissue facial tissues right tissue uh, it respects all of us when we can get away from the branding and you know you may have gotten your cuddler from cuddle comfort or from certified cuddlers or cuddle sanctuary and they are not cuddleless and the training is very different um, cuddle comfort doesn't even have a training so <laughs> you know you don't know what you get in there but um it's different and uh just my that's my last thing i want to say thank you for listening Mm, I needed to say all this. Um, I am sorry for those I've caused harm to. And I don't regret what I do. <laughs> In terms of the work. And I love my clients and I love what I do. Bless you all. Take care.